Hello, it's Saturday the 11th of July. You're tuned in to our 6pm newscast coming to you from Ali Dang's News Centre in Salisbury. Good to have you with us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this evening, the United Nations is going to deliver life-saving medical supplies to children in North Korea as the country continues to suffer from its worst drought in decades. There are also fears of a new food crisis in the north as the regime has drastically cut already measly food handouts to its citizens. Connie Kim reports. The United Nations is going to send medical supplies to children living in areas hit hardest by the drought gripping North Korea. Radio Free Asia reported Saturday that the United Nations Children's Fund will supply medical supplies to about 10,000 children suffering from acute malnutrition in Hwangaebukdo province. UNICEF says rainfall this year is down 75 percent compared to 2012, and the number of people suffering from diarrhea has shot up by 140 percent. Cases of diarrhea have surged due to a lack of clean drinking water and rapidly deteriorating sanitary conditions. The agency also says that well over half the farmland in Hwangaebukdo province has been damaged by drought this year. Last month, North Korea said the country was in the grips of the worst drought in 100 years. The drought's effect on farmland has also impacted food supplies. The United Nations Agricultural Organization said North Korea's food rations for July dropped 25 percent to 310 grams per person a day. 410 grams of food had been distributed for the past six months of this year. The organization said this is mainly due to the short supply of early planted crops such as barley, wheat and potato, an important food source for North Koreans. The UN has relisted North Korea as one of 34 food deficit countries, but the regime has not sought food assistance from the UN agencies or Western countries. Connie Kim, Arirang News. The nominee to become the highest ranking military officer in the U.S. Armed Forces has vowed to make it even more difficult for North Korea to trade weapons of mass destruction with other rogue states. Speaking at his confirmation hearing to be the next chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joseph Dunford said he would track down North Korean entities spreading weapons-related technology to Iran and Syria. He added that Washington will strengthen cooperation with related countries to prevent weapons spread via North Korean ships and aircraft. Dunford also stressed the United States will work closely with South Korea to shore up its defense posture. Now, analysts say that remark provides yet another hint the U.S. will push Seoul to accept the deployment of a U.S. missile defense system known as Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, or THAAD, to ensure the Allies can uh, more effectively respond to North Korea's ballistic missile threats. Greece's parliament has thrown its support behind the government's latest proposals aimed at ending the country's debt crisis. After a late-night session that went into the early hours of Saturday morning, 250 MPs out of the 300 in parliament gave the government a mandate to negotiate a third bailout with its international creditors. The package includes harsh austerity measures, but also financing for the next three years, plans for growth and possible debt restructuring. However, several key MPs from the ruling Syriza party withheld their support in protest at the austerity measures contained in the new package. Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras is asking creditors for 53.5 billion euros to cover Greece's debts until 2018. The proposals will now be studied by Eurozone finance ministers for approval ahead of an emergency EU summit in Brussels on Sunday. The head of the U.S. Federal Reserve says the Fed is still on track to raise rates this year, despite the highly uncertain outlook for the U.S. economy and inflation. Making her first public remarks since the June meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee, Janet Yellen also repeated that the subsequent pace of rate increases will be gradual. In a very closely watched speech in Cleveland on Friday local time, Yellen stressed that she was concerned the U.S. labor market remains weak, adding that more workers could be encouraged back into the job market with stronger growth. The Fed chief did not mention the recent market volatility in China and only mentioned the Greek debt crisis in passing, saying the situation remains unresolved. The Federal Reserve has kept interest rates at near zero since the 2008 global financial crisis.
Now, 3D printing is becoming more prevalent and not only within the manufacturing sector. More people are making it a hobby, allowing them to turn virtually anything they can imagine into reality. Park se reports. This remote control tank can maneuver and activate its headlamps. All of the tank's 2,000 parts were 3D printed except for the electronic components and motor. 3D printing is satisfying because I can make whatever I imagine, watch it come to life and own it. It's helpful for those who suffer from a lot of social stress. Using 3D printers, characters like Iron Man and the Hulk can be recreated. They can also print small details like the windows on this medieval building. 3D printing may even become a part of your routine at the dentist. With the latest technology, a tooth can be printed in a matter of minutes. 3D printing is beginning to establish itself in popular culture. These high-performance printers are becoming more affordable with a price tag of around 300 US dollars. However, industry experts stress that safety should be considered just as important as performance and price point. They warn that those printing indoors must work in well-ventilated areas when working with certain materials such as ABS, a type of plastic which gives off an odor similar to burning oil. Park Se-young, Arirang News. Now, Samsung CNT is pouring all of its efforts into getting shareholders to support its proposed merger with another Samsung Group affiliate. Top executives of Samsung CNT and ordinary employees are said to be visiting minority shareholders' homes to ask them to back the merger with Chael Industries. A company official has even admitted that there is no plan B. Analysts say minority shareholders whose combined stake in Samsung CNT is around 25 percent could become swing voters. Now, U.S. hedge fund Elliott Associates, which is the third largest stakeholder in Samsung CNT, is pushing really hard to block the company's proposed merger. Elliott says the terms of the merger are completely unfair. Now, shareholders will vote on this merger at a meeting set for Friday, July 17th. And if the merger goes ahead, it will put Lee Jae-yong, the only son of hospitalised Samsung Group chairman Lee Gun hee in a much stronger position at the conglomerate as he looks to transfer control to himself. Now, shipments of large screen smartphones, or phablets as they are otherwise known, are expected to surpass tablet PCs this year. A new study from market researcher IC Insights shows shipments of smartphones with screen sizes greater than 5 inches are expected to grow 66% in 2015. In real numbers, that's 252 million phablets shipping this year, up from 152 million units sold in 2014. I see it projects tablet sales to increase a mere 2% in 2015, reaching 238 million units. The market research firm says the popularity of Apple's iPhone 6 Plus handset, which started shipping in September 2014, is the main driver of the momentum in the global phablet market. Now, the summer movie season may just be getting started, but it's never too early to start looking ahead to the films we'll be packing into cinemas to see. And with that in mind, uh, Won Jian breaks down some of the most anticipated Korean blockbusters to hit the big screen over the next couple of months. The summer movie season is here, so get ready for new films starring some of Korea's biggest actors. First up is Assassination, starring actors Ha Jong Woo, Chun Ji Hyun, and Lee Jong Jae. It's about a group of Korean killers on a mission to assassinate a Japanese official during Japan's colonial rule in the 1930s. The action packed film will open in theaters later this month on July 22nd. I had a lot of fun filming the movie, which makes me feel that audiences will be entertained as well. Next in line is director Liu seung newest film, Veteran, which will hit theaters on August 5th. This movie also stars famous actors like Hwang Jung-min and Yoo Ah-in. It's about a detective chasing down a young criminal who happens to be a third-generation heir to a powerful conglomerate. Actor Hwang Jung-min says it wasn't easy to act out all the fight scenes in the movie. 
There were many moments where you could get easily hurt if you weren't paying attention. We were all extremely careful, but we decided to make the action scenes look as realistic as possible. Last but not least, The Beauty Inside is a romantic fantasy about a man who wakes up in a different body every day. Based on an American social film with the same title, the movie created a lot of buzz with 21 actors playing a single character. The Beauty Inside will be released on August 20th. So which one of these films will become the hottest blockbuster of the summer? We'll just have to wait and see how things play out at the Korean box office. Won ji Hyun, Arirang News. Now, finally, taking a brief look at the weather. And it has been the hottest day of the summer so far across much of the country. The daytime high in some parts hitting 35 degrees Celsius. And it's going to be another sticky night as well. The low is only going to dip to 23 degrees Celsius right here in Seoul. Sunday is going to bring some much needed rain for most of the country and we'll see much lower temperatures as a result. But it's still going to be very, very humid. With that, let's take a look at the weather around the world. Well, that's all we have for now. Do enjoy the rest of your Saturday wherever you're watching us and do stay tuned to Adidang TV. We'll be back with our next newscast at 10pm Korea time. Until then, goodbye.